Hey folks, Quill18 here and welcome to another episode of our Unity tutorial on how to make tile-based movement. Now, between uh, the last videos here, I just went and cleaned up the code just a little bit. I explicitly moved all of our code generation into our, or rather, our map generation into its own function just to clean up the start function a little bit. And I also added in a bit here where we make a bit of a swampy area, just for say. And I'm sure in the last video there are probably some people that are saying that um, I should be using enums for these tile types, and that's uh, probably what I would use in my own code, but I'm trying to, you know, not introduce too many code uh, things, so we're just going to have to remember that grasslands are zero, swamps are one, mountains are two, and I don't think that'll be too bad. So uh, with the swampy area put in there, if I hit play, you can see I've got a swampy area over there. So in this episode, what we're going to do is we're going to add in some sort of unit and then have it move from tile to tile. So it's mostly going to be kind of, I don't know, UI kind of stuff today. Um, I, don't know, I think that'll be okay. So our object is going to be really simple. I'm going to go ahead. I'll start off with an empty. So this is going to be um, the unit, the unit like that. Okay, just a generic unit. I'll go ahead and make sure he's centered because why not? And I'll go and add in a cube. This represents the, uh, the unit model. I always spell unity. I don't know why. <laughs> Unit model is going to be inside of that. We'll probably, I'll scale it down to like half size because we've got to remember that our tiles right now are a default cube. So by having a half sized object, um, it should fit in relatively well. Now, the only thing right now is if we hit play, this object will actually be sticking into the ground. Uh, let me toggle off 2D mode so we can actually see. Um, and where'd my object go? Unit. Yeah, you can see he's inside. Um, our cubes. And the reason is our cubes uh, by default are centered on a tile. So by having it centered on the Z axis, both the tile, the terrain and the cube itself, um, everything is sort of sticking together. Now, I'm not really in a position to move my, um, my terrain. So what I'm going to do for my object is I'm going to leave the unit where it is, but I'm going to take the model and just pull it forward. Um, hang on, what direction? Which one's the right one? Pull it forward on the z-axis by one and a half units. No, the other way around. So negative one. Oh no, negative 0 0.75. There we go. Because the terrain cube is one unit wide. So you want it half a unit. And then this one is a half a unit wide. So you want it another quarter. So it's half a unit plus a quarter unit will position this in the right place. Now I did this while I was playing. So I'm going to have to stop the game and then redo it over here. So negative 0 0.75. And then I hit play, there we go. So now what's convenient is our actual unit object here, which is the empty, can just be 0, 0, 0, and it'll be at that perfect tile over there, whereas visually you can still see everything. That's why you tend to do this nested stuff so that you don't have to use weird coordinates on your actual unit object. Uh, you just put the model where it should be and then everything is hunky-dory. So the idea is our model over here can, you know, move around the map and do stuff. Um, so we're going to have to go ahead and do that. I'm just going to have a single unit in this game. That way we can bypass the need to select the unit. Instead of selecting the unit, we'll just assume this unit is always selected, um, and then we will just deal with having this unit move about the map. So, how are we going to do that? Well, what I'm thinking is, when we click on a tile, assuming we have our unit selected, which we do, what we're going to do is when we click on a tile, we're going to have the unit move there. You know what I just realized? You can't really see the edges between the tiles, which might be fine. Um, personally, I'm quite keen on my games having very well-defined edges. Like if I'm playing Civilization, I always turn the grid view on. And I think that for the sake of this video, it's gonna be a lot easier if you can explicitly see them. Now what's nice is in the scene view, you can put on the textured wireframe, but you can't really do that here. You know what? We're gonna pop into, uh, into Photoshop for a second here. Photoshop. And we're gonna make a quick little tile, or a quick little texture. So we're gonna go um, new doesn't have to be particularly high res. No, 120, even that's way overkill. We're gonna do that, and all we're gonna do is we just need an edge. We need a box. We need um the easiest way to do that. Should I just build a rectangle and put a stroke around it? So we want the fill to be white. Should have thought of this before the video, but it just occurred to me as I'm trying to move around. I'm like, ah, we can't actually see where the grids are. If I do something like that, am I going to be happy with it? Yeah, 
yeah, I think so. So we're going to go ahead and save it for web. I'm just going to make a, a JPEG will be fine, I guess. Um, is it properly aligned? I probably should have done this a little bit more manual. Just going to move it to the other screen over here for my file save dialog. Do, 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 do. So all I'm going to do is stick this in the project folder. File map movement tutorial ep3. There we go which is right over here. We're going to drop it inside of assets. And this is just going to be something like my um, tile grid line. All right. So I've got that object. And of course, you can go ahead and download the project and you'll get this exact same thing. So what we're going to do in our materials, I'm going to go and assign this texture like that. In fact, I'm going to do that for all of them. I do that right. Yeah. Now if I hit play, there we go. Very nice. Let's get rid of the textured wire over there. Now we can clearly see the edges of our tile, and I'm way, 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 way happier with that um, because it'll make things just a little bit more clear. Okay, so the idea is now, when I click on, say, this tile here, I want the unit to move there. So that implies a few things. First of all, it kind of implies that our tile prefab dudes over here should probably have a component. So this is going to be something like clickable tile or tile click handler or whatever naming convention you prefer today. So this clickable tile is going to be very simple. It's just going to have on mouse down or up, probably up. If you respond to, it doesn't make a difference here, but you could easily imagine a situation where you'd want to be able to scroll the view around, in which case you only want the tile clicks to respond on a mouse up and when it's not dragging, yada, 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 listen, it'll, it'll be fine. Um, our tiles, we have colliders. Yes, which means this should respond. Assuming I've spelled everything correctly. Let's do a test. Debug.log. Click. Now, if I hit play and I do that, there we go. We got a click command in the debug log. That's great. Now, this tile, this object, right? This prefab or this game object over here has no idea what tile it actually represents in the game world. Now there's a few ways we could do that. It knows its coordinates. It knows it's at x1, y1 um, in the game world. So its transform is at that position. So maybe we could use that. The problem with using that is sometimes you're going to end up in a situation where, for whatever reason, the unity unit coordinates don't map to your actual tile map coordinates. Right? Like what if we took all these tiles we grabbed all these things like this and we wanted, I don't know, we want them somewhere else. We wanted them over here for whatever reason. Should that be allowed? Probably. Why not? But now it means that this tile over here has a completely jacked up position that doesn't match with anything in our actual tile map data. So here's what I propose. Now that we have this clickable tile script attached to all of our prefabs, what if on here, we had something like public int, and then we have like tile x, tile y, right? And then when we actually generate our map, right, all of our clickables over here, we instantiate things. What if we grab a copy, game object geo, grab a copy of this. We do have to do a typecast over here to make that work. Game object has a component called clickable tile on it. There, let's save that clickable tile CT equals that this is on our newly spawned where so our prefab is being instantiated. We're going to grab its clickable tile component. And we're going to say, hey, listen, your your tile X is this and your tile Y is that now now the script knows which map tile it it uh, responds to. Not only that, but um, we could also when we click, obviously we're going to want to send a message to the map or to the unit or to something. I don't know what, but now we can, we can use this. So the, I don't know what is actually something that's a pretty good question to, um, to resolve right now. Where should this message be sent? Probably the unit or maybe via the map. Depends on your structure and how things are supposed to work and, and all that kind of jazz. Um, let's send it to the map. Okay. So the map, we're going to say we've got some sort of, um, public function we can say here. We can say public void move 
unit two. And it, this is just gonna take an integer, x int y. And that's all it is. Or maybe it's move, move selected unit two, something like that, right? Now we know our selected unit is always going to be the same. We're gonna hard code it in, but we're gonna have a variable here. So we'll have a public game object, um, and this is gonna be called selected unit. Now, if we wanted to, on our unit, we could have some sort of click handler. We could have multiple units, and each unit will have a click handler. When you click on it, it tells the map what the correct selected unit is. Right? Very simple, very easy to do. I will leave that as an exercise to the viewer, which is one of the most jerky and annoying things you can say sometimes. In our case, we're simply going to drag our unit object into there. Make sure you're not dragging the unit model, but the actual unit into there. So the one unit we have will always be selected. So, and then over here, we're saying move selected unit to some coordinates. So back in clickable tile, when you release the mouse, we want to tell the map, hey, do this. Now let's go ahead and say that we've got a public uh, tile map and then map object. And when we spawn our tiles over here, we'll also say, we're also gonna tell it what the current map is. We could do a find, we could do all sorts of things, but hey, why don't we just set it right away, right over here. So when we spawn this tile, we tell it where it's located and what the map is. It's gonna have all that information. So here, when we release the mouse up, we're gonna say map.move selected unit two, and it's gonna get moved to our tile X, tile Y. There we go. Now our map is responsible for doing everything. Now, right now, to see that it works, we can, we can just cheat. We can do a really silly thing. We've got our selected unit. It's got a transform. We're just going to set its, um, its position. Whoops, typos. And I set its position to a new vector with the X, the Y, and the Z there. Okay. Oops, vector three, got a typo. There we go. Now if I hit play, let's see if it works. I'm going to click, 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 click. There we go. So now the unit, and we can go over the line, everything is working well. The unit simply instantly teleports to whatever tile we click on. Uh, I don't like my camera position here. I'm going to move it to something like 5-5. Five, five. Now let's hit play. There we go. There, I like that. Camera's a little bit more centered now. Um, and you know what, our unit? Why don't we move it to the middle as well? Is that about where we want it? Yeah, that's pretty good. All right, something like that. So this is very cheatery for lots of different reasons, but it's got our basics in there. One of the things that's worth noting is that we are just setting a transform on the unit and we're just blindly sending it to the coordinates. Well, not even the position of the, the, the tile. We're not sending it to the position of the tile in the game world. We're setting it to the X and Y that belongs to the tile, right? What we really need is some sort of function. This is what we need. We need a function that says, that converts um, the returns vector to, it's a public vector to, um, let me think here. Actually, you should return a vector three. It's something like tile chord to world chord. So int x, what the? Int y. All right, something with the autocomplete is all jacked up. It's probably because of where I was. Oh, even the scrolling is all messed up. What the hell, mono develop, stop being stupid. So this thing's job is to take in a tile coordinate and return a world coordinate. Now, as it so happens, we're just going to be lazy. We're literally just going to return like that. But it's very easy to imagine that where we're going to want to move the map around, we're going to want to scroll things around, we're going to want to do something, maybe there's different scaling issues. This might be slightly more complicated. But for now, this is going to be fine. So we're just going to set the unit position to that. 
And in fact, we probably want something more complicated than this. The unit probably wants to know where it exists on the map, and it's going to want, very much like a clickable tile, it's going to want to know it's tile X and tile Y at some point. We may need that for this tutorial, we may not. I think for our purposes this is going to be okay. Um, let me think. For now it's going to be okay. When we actually do the pathfinding, though, it probably will need that. Hmm. All right, tell you what. Let's, let's do it a little bit more correct. Our unit. So we've got a clickable tile. Let's make some sort of script here for our... This is going to be a unit. It's going to have a script on it called unit, and it's not going to do anything in particular. It's going to have a public int tile x public int tile y and maybe what we'll do is we'll have some sort of public uh, function called move to tile int x int y or set tile Just trying to figure out where the best place to actually physically move this. A, set its correct tile, and then B, move it. I'm getting, I, the problem is I'm getting ahead of myself, and I'm not doing a very good job of explaining what the heck I'm trying to accomplish here. But, on our selected unit, tell you what, we'll set the world coordinate here. But our selected unit, we've got a get component called unit on it, and we're going to set its tile X to be X, and the tile Y to be Y. These get components used to be slow. Now they're quite fast. If it's Unity 4.6, they cache and things. So this should be relatively okay. So now the unit here always knows what its actual map tile is, regardless of its world position. It so happens that the world position and the tile position match up. The X and Y will, will be the same in our particular demo, but it's not guaranteed to be the case. So we set the unit's data here, and then we set its visual information over here. These are two separate things. They don't necessarily have to link up. And again, depending on how big of a map you have and what kind of optimizations you have, it is very, very, very conceivable that you could have a class of units that don't have a game object on the screen. They simply have some data, this unit data, which in that case, the unit data should not be a component on a game object because you might be destroying and recreating the game object all the time. So you're going to actually want some sort of database instead. You're going to want something very much like this. You're going to want some sort of, you know, public unit array like this that you're going to want to spawn attached game objects to on and off. But that's a little bit beyond the scope of this particular tutorial. So we're going to assume that this is going to work perfectly fine. So again, we're in a situation where we can just click and teleport this around. That's, that's fine and dandy, but it's obviously nothing close to what we're actually looking for. What we want is, well, two things. One, when we click here, I don't think we want the object to necessarily teleport. It would be nice if it slid from one position to another. But more importantly, when we click over here, we don't want the unit to instantly transport. In fact, we don't want the unit to be able to go into the mountains at all. And if we click here, we don't want it to go directly. We want it to go around the mountains. That'll have to wait until next time. See you, folks. Bye-bye.